Welcome back to Network Africa. 34 countries from Africa, Asia and the Arab world have joined a new military alliance put together by Saudi Arabia to fight terrorism. Saudi Defense Minister Mohammed bin Salman says a new alliance would coordinate efforts against extremisms, extremists in Iraq, Syria, Libya, Egypt and Afghanistan. Now, Iran, however, is not part of the coalition. Neither is Syria, whose governments are close to the Shia-ruled Iran. They're not in the coalition. Neither is Afghanistan. Prince Mohammed, who made the announcement today, said the countries have procedures to go through before joining the coalition. But out of keenness, 34 countries have been announced. African countries part of the coalition are Nigeria, Benin, Chad, Djibouti, Egypt, Gabon, Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, Libya, Mali, Morocco, Mauritania, Niger, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Sudan, Togo, and Tunisia. Well, joining us now to discuss the new military alliance is uh, Dr. Ona Ekomu. He joins us uh, via telephone. Uh, doctor, thank you for joining us on the program. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Maratino. What do you make of the new coalition coming together and the timing of the coalition? Well, I, I think uh, this is um, part of the uh, international cooperation um, that is needed really to face um, the worldwide um, uh, problem of um, uh, fundamentalism and extremism. Now, um, more recently, you've seen that um, uh, right from the Paris attack of uh, November 13th and then the 20th um, November attack in Mali and uh, around the world, uh, the shooting in uh, uh, San Bernardino in um, the United States, uh, and all the raids that have occurred in Belgium, and uh, of course also uh, the uh, evacuation of the stadium where uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel was to watch the football uh, game. What we've seen is a ratcheting of, of um, terrorist attacks around the world. Now, uh, the Saudis, perhaps uh, they feel that uh, uh, because of their deep pockets, they should take a leadership role in this. Uh, they have now uh, decided to set up that uh, coalition and uh, get all of these uh, countries, a lot of African countries and a few um, Asian countries. Uh, but of course, you've mentioned uh, Middle East countries too, but you've mentioned that uh, some key countries there are not there, Iran, Syria, Afghanistan. And that is for obvious reasons, because um, um, the Saudis and these countries, they don't see eye to eye. So it would be very difficult, it would be inconceivable seeing them join a coalition that is uh, led by the Saudis. So I think um, in direct answer to your question, the uh, coalition is perhaps in a, re a response to um, the call that the U.S. has been making that uh, others should pick up, uh, particularly Muslim countries, to pick up the conflict and um, join uh, in a very vigorous way in the fight against terrorism. Of course, you've seen what happened recently also in Turkey. So these are some of the things that are driving this uh, trend. Uh, doctor, looking at the list of countries that are part of this group, the number of African countries, some of them are also experiencing uh, their form of violent extremism. Uh, countries like Nigeria, uh, Bene, Chad, and um, uh, I believe Niger are experiencing yes. their own form of terrorism with Boko Haram ravaging most cities and trying to take over so why would, why would the focus not be also on African countries that are also experiencing terrorism? Well, um, this, is, uh, part of, uh, this is part of the strategy, part of the design to combat terrorism in, uh, let's say, in the West African sub-region. And West African terrorism right now is um, affecting Nigeria chiefly, Cameroon, Niger, Chad. Now, um, terrorism is not a battle that can be fought only in one local area, let's say within a jurisdiction like Nigeria or a sovereign territory like Nigeria. You saw what was happening before with Boko Haram. When the commander uh, attacked here, they run across the border to Cameroon and to Chad and to Niger. But when 
the those countries uh, with the MNJTF uh, that was revived uh, through the AU mandate came on board, uh, their activities were checkmated. So what I'm trying to say is that terrorism is a multinational crime. It's an international crime. It goes across, it's a transnational crime. It goes across borders. And so it is by having this kind of international coalition, sharing resources, sharing intelligence, sharing um, ordnance, and material, military material, and sharing training that it can be checkmated. It's not uh, something that, because, of course, you saw what happened in uh, Paris. The people who attacked Paris on November 13th, most of them were uh, gotten across the border in uh, mm -hmm. Belgium. So they, that's the way, that's the nature of the uh, uh, beef, unfortunately. Well, it's not very often we see uh, this sort of coalition taking place between Arab and African countries in Asia. It's, it's quite a, an interesting mix of countries. But what sort of contribution is Saudi Arabia or the coalition hoping that Africa will bring to the table? Well, certainly uh, we have a lot to bring uh, to the table. Let's take the frontline states that are fighting uh, Boko Haram right now. Nigeria, Cameroon, Niger, and Chad will have a lot of experience uh, fighting uh, terror in this part of the world because we've seen it up close and personal. Now, look at uh, a country like Central African Republic. Look at the Sudan also. These are places where there's active terrorism. Uh, you go to East Africa, you have Somalia, Kenya, uh, you have even Uganda. Uh, and you have um, uh, um, uh, all of these, uh, Mali, uh, even Mauritania, you know, even some Boko Haram elements were uh, arrested recently in Senegal. So what I'm trying to say is um, these African um, nations can bring a narrative of their uh, experience with uh, terrorism and also contribute troops because the Saudis, they don't have that much by way of um, uh, military uh, personnel, but they have a lot by way of um, well equipment and uh, certainly funding. So it is with that kind of a partnership, you know, um, having people bring um, real life experience to the table, bring funding to the table, bring cooperation, bring like mindedness to the table that we can fight it. In. Now, let me go back again and just say one uh, quickly, I might say that one of the most important things driving this is that. Is that narrative that is saying that um, uh, the fundamentalism we are seeing, the radicalization, the terrorism, the extremism, is um, an Islamic problem? And I think the Saudis are taking a lead in this. They say, okay, you know what? We are going to push back. And I believe the U.S. president has made that point quite mm -hmm. eloquently, saying that the Muslim nations should uh, join up in the fight against terror. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. Really appreciate your thoughts on the issue. Thank you very much, ma'am. Well, violent extremism on the continent remains a major problem. But according to the commander of the U.S. Africa Command, people and nations are working together to defeat it. The U.S. Africa Command's main effort is helping African nations build the capabilities and capacity to handle their own problems. And according to General David Rodriguez, this is being accomplished through small teams of U.S. forces working with nations at the request of their governments. Besides five lines of effort. Uh, the first line of effort, think, go east, which is uh, counter al-Shabaab, which is to bring about a more viable future in uh, the, the violence-torn nation of Somalia. The second line of effort, think, uh, Libya and the the struggle with uh, Daesh and and Al Qaeda uh, in the Maghreb uh, that extends over into Mali and the like. Uh, the third line of effort is containing Boko Haram and the scourge in the Lake Chad region, which has uh, which has been the most violent of all terrorist groups uh, in the in the last five years. The fourth line of effort is to uh, truncate the uh, the unhelpful uh, um, movement of goods, services, trafficking uh, through the continent of uh, of goods and services, uh, weapons, people, uh, and drugs. 
The fifth line of effort is, is just frankly building partnership capacity and security so that uh, African problems become African solutions done by Africaners. Well, five people have been killed during protests in Ethiopia over farmlands near the capital. The government wants to incorporate the lands into a new zone to attract business, but the people obviously disagree. Many of the protesters, mostly young people, have been clashing with security forces in several towns in the Oromia region. Around the capital, Addis Ababa, in the past few weeks, there have been disparity over the number of the dead, as opposition figures say that the numbers are much higher. But the ruling party in Oromia have accused opposition groups of stoking clashes between protesters and the police. Farmers and those opposed to the plan worry about land grabs. In the past, Ethiopia has been criticized for seizing property without consent for its industrialization drive or without properly compensating those living on the land. According to Ethiopian law, all land belongs to the state and those purchasing the land are only considered leaseholders. Well, still ahead on Network Africa. Mali's Radisson Blue Hotel reopens after one month of being attacked by gunmen. Here's still with us.